Good evening, everybody. I will call our regular city council meeting of July 14th, held virtually via WebEx to order. Um, please, if you could all put your camera on and unmute and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, in liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. The next item is our open forum. I will ask Kelly if um, anybody is here for the open forum, and I understand that we do have uh, a lag time of a few seconds, so. Um, we'll we'll just wait a little bit as well. Is anyone on? Uh, thank you, Mayor. We currently do not have anybody, but would like to remind residents we are taking calls for the open forum um, to participate live during the meeting. You can call 612-861-0651, and you'll be connected to me, and then uh, we'll place you into the meeting to participate um, and leave comments um, for council. So if you would like to do that, we will be taking calls for the open forum. Thank you. We'll just wait a little bit and then I'll close the open forum if nobody calls. Okay, seeing as nobody is here for the open forum, I will close the open forum and then move to the next item, which is the approval of the minutes of the City Council and HRA work session of June 15th, 2020, the City Council work session of June 23rd, 2020, and the City Council meeting of June 23rd, 2020. Council Member Supple, I move approval. Council Member Whalen will second. Thank you. The minutes have been have been moved by Council Member Supple and seconded by Council Member Whalen. Um, Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take the roll call vote? Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Trotman. Council Member Garcia. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four eyes. Thank you. The minutes have been approved. The next item is the approval of the agenda. Councilmember Whalen, so moved. Councilmember Supple, second. It's been approved by Councilmember Whalen and seconded by Councilmember Supple. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Troutman. Council Member Garcia. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The agenda has been approved. The next item is a consent calendar with City Manager Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. The consent calendar contains several separate items which are acted upon by the city council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items and recommended actions have also been approved. No further council action is necessary. Uh, item A, consider an ordinance amending regulations pertaining to the installation of a small, fire, small wireless facility and wireless support structures in the right of way. Item B, Consider a resolution granting a conditional use permit to allow a small wireless facility in the right of way near 7108 Lindell Avenue South. Item C, approve a resolution authorizing a summary publication of a lengthy zoning code amendment previously approved on January 28, 2020. Item D, consider the adoption of a resolution granting a subdivision waiver for a minor boundary adjustment at 720, I'm sorry, 7020. Oak Grove Boulevard and 7000 Lindale Avenue. Item E, consider the adoption of a resolution supporting a liberal communities demonstration act grant. Oh, sorry, that ran off the page.
sorry. Uh, item E, consider the adoption of a resolution supporting a livable communities demonstration act grant ap application to the Metropolitan Council to support redevelopment of the northeast corner of 65th and Lindell Avenue and of 101st 66th Street East. Item F, consider the adoption of a resolution appointing election judges for the primary election of August 11th, 2020 and general election of November 3rd, 2020. Item G, continue the public hearing to consider the planning and vacation of easements at 6228 Penn Avenue South and 6200 Queen Avenue South, London Byerleys to July 28th, 2020. Item H, approve a third amendment to the site lease agreement at 7401 Lovely South between the city and Richfield, the city of Richfield and T-Mobile Central LLC with regard to the extension of the lease renewal items. And finally, item I, we're almost all the way through the alphabet today. Consider the adoption of a resolution designating Linda Avenue from 62nd Street to 77th Street an urban district pursuant to Minnesota statutes section 169.114, I'm sorry, 169.14, and setting the speed limit of the quarter at 30 miles per hour and directing public works to erect signage accordingly. And I submit these items for your consideration as part of the consent calendar. Thank you, is there Council a motion to approve it? Council Member Whalen, move to approve. Council Member Supple, second. The consent calendar has been moved by Council Member Whalen and seconded by Council Member Supple. Are there any council discussion items on the consent calendar? Council Member Whalen? Uh, yes, thank you. A few quick comments. Uh, first, thanks to all the election judges. Um, lots of great uh, civic uh civically engaged residents there so thank you for that um wanted to thank uh the staff for working on the the regulations for the small wireless facilities i know that has been um a bit of a headache given how much our hands have been tied by um state and federal law but i um i think we've found the best path we can and i know that was a fair amount of staff work to figure out um and then for the uh, for the public, just wanted to say with item E, it included um, uh, supporting a grant for the enclave development um, that's proposed for 65th in Lindale. Um, I just that wanted to point out that that development is still um, it has not yet been voted on by the council um, and there's going to be another discussion on this coming Monday on um, the timing of the grant. Um, I'm, I think it's the best move to approve now, but I do still have some pretty significant reservations about the project as a whole and know some residents do as well. Um, and so if folks are interested more in that would encourage them to tune in uh, next Monday before the HRA meeting, the council and HRA have a work session with some updates and more details. Thank you, Council Member Whalen. Other council questions or discussion items? No? All right. Um, Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez? Aye. Council Member Sapo? Aye. Council Member Trotman? Aye. Council Member Garcia? Council Member Whalen? Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The consent calendar has been approved. The next item, item four, was going to go to Council Member Garcia, but unfortunately she is not able to. Item number four is the consideration of a variety of land use approvals for a proposal to construct an 82 unit apartment building on 64th Street east of Lindale Avenue with a future address of 664th Street West. North Bay Companies has submitted land use applications for a planned unit development consisting of a new five story 82 unit building on 64th Street and renovations to an existing 22 unit building at 6345 Lindale Avenue South. 
The development site consists of five current lots, including an aforementioned apartment building to be preserved, three duplexes, one single family home that would be removed to make way for the proposed 82 unit building. The site located at Lakes and Lind the site is located at Lakes and Lindell area. Since the late 1990s, the city has identified this area for reinvestment and or redevelopment. Currently, four of the five properties are zoned and guided for medium to high density housing. The fifth property, the single family home at 514 64 Street West is zoned and guided for single family or low density residential use. As part of their application, the developer is requesting amendments to the comprehensive plan and zoning designation of this site, requesting that the guiding district be changed to mixed use and the zoning to planned mixed use. The comprehensive plan designates a large contiguous area just south of the development site as mixed use as a part of Richfield's downtown, encompassing the greater 66th Street and Lindell Avenue area. Changing the designation of this property to mixed use would represent a logistical or a logical expansion of that area, eventually extending up Lindell Avenue to the city limit at Crosstown as envisioned at the Lakes and Lindell plan. The intent of the mixed use category is to create a vibrant, thriving city center. At a work session on November 2019, the developer first presented a concept plan to the City Council, Housing Redevelopment Authority and Planning Commission for a 90 unit building. Prior to submitting a land use application, a neighborhood open house was held on February 27th. Based on feedback from city staff and nearby residents, Plans were modified to reduce the number of units to 82 and step the east end of the building down to four stories. The proposed 82 unit building includes 56 studio units, 25 one bedroom units, and one two bedroom units, which would be an ADA accessible unit on the ground floor. Including the existing 22 unit building, there are 104 total units in the PUD. Plans presented to the Planning Commission included 117 parking spaces a ratio of 1.125 spaces per unit. The development is eligible for a 10% reduction from the standard of 1.25 spaces per unit requirement due to the proximity to frequent public transit services. However, the Planning Commission recommendation is only to approve the development plan if the parking ratio is 1.25 per unit. In response to the Planning Commission's feedback, the developer was able to add four stalls by reconfiguring the parking lot. While the reconfigured lot does not offer optimal circulation, it does reduce the number of curb cuts on the streets and adds stalls. In addition, the developer offers the following analysis of parking needs by bedroom size in support of the proposed parking ratio. I'm not going to review the, um, the whole chart, but folks can look at it in the agenda if they would like to read through it. Based on the developer's experience with occupancy at Henley 1 in the existing building, studios are occupied by one person and thus in need of one stall. The one bedroom unit at the Henley 1 are primarily occupied by one person. However, the proposed parking ratios would allow for over half of them to be occupied by households with two cars and or provide guest parking. Given this additional information and the added four stalls, staff recommends that council approve the proposed plan with 121 parking stalls. The proposal meets all zoning code requirements of the underlying MUN zoning district. The proposed building height, five stories, is within range, within the range allowed in the MUN district, which is eight stories maximum. The sole deviation from the code is that the number of, of compact parking stalls proposed, which is 27, is slightly higher than the permitted 24 or 20% of the total parking supply. The proposed development site and buildings are attractively designed and landscaped and would provide a number of amenities to its residents, including a fitness center, bike storage and repair area, dog run and outdoor amenity space. The building mass is positioned back from 64th Street and from the neighborhood to the east using the existing single family property for landscaping, buffering space, sidewalk and surface parking. The proposal enhances public infrastructure by extending a public sidewalk along 64th Street and adding a trail connection into Gar Garfield Park from 64th Street. 
Additionally, the proposed plans offer to an opportunity to preserve and improve the existing affordable apartment building. The Planning Commission also recommends adding stipulations that signage direct traffic traffic existing, oh, exiting, sorry, traffic exiting the parking lots to use Lindale Avenue and that the curb cut from the street to the park path be handicap accessible. Those stipulations are a part of the recommended motion. Staff finds that the project, um, the proposed project meets the goals of the comprehensive plan and zoning code requirements and therefore recommends approval of the application. So I know we have, I believe we have the developer here and staff as well. So I'll just hand it over to staff to see if there's anything they would like to add. No, I think you did a really good job of um, going through the staff report. Um, as you noted, there's only one way in which this does not meet all of our codes uh, and requirements, and that is by having three more compact stalls than they are uh, supposed to. Um, you know, I, our thinking there is with the number of studios and smaller units, uh, there's nothing scientific about this, but the thinking is that uh, it, it could be households with smaller cars as well. Um, again, just to have one single deviation in a in a project this large is remarkable. I can't remember having one that came this close to meeting all requirements. So with that, uh, uh, city planner Melissa Paleman and myself would be available to answer any questions you might have. Great, are there any questions from council members on the item? Okay, if not, then um, I will make the motion. Oh, I just want to check. Okay, so there's three separate motions. So I will make the first motion um, to approve the attached resolution amending the comprehensive plan to designate lots three through eight, block five, and Lindell Oaks addition as mixed use. Council Member Supplall, second. Thank you. The motion has been made by. Mayor Regan Gonzalez and seconded by Council Member Supple. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take? Uh, ex I'm sorry, I was going to ask if uh, there was council questions on this one. No. All right. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Trumpin. Aye. Councilmember Garcia. Councilmember Whelan. Aye. We have four eyes. Can't Thank you. The resolution has been approved. Um, I will make the motion for the next one, which is to approve the attached ordinance amending the Richfield Zoning Code Appendix 1 to designate lots 3 through 8, Block 5, Lindell Oaks addition in planned as planned mixed use. Councilmember Whalen, I'll second. Great. The motion has been made by Mayor Regan Gonzalez and seconded by um, Councilmember Whalen. I did, I'll open it up for Councilmember questions and comments. Okay. I did have a couple questions or comments, and I'm not sure exactly what item to bring it up at, so I'm just going to bring it up right now. Um, I wanted to ask, sorry, I wanted to ask about um, the trail. Could you explain with the trail? I, I saw on one page that there was like a strip of grass in between the parking lot and then um, the trail. And then in another one, it was right up against the parking lot. Could you clarify what the final version is? Yeah, I'll let Ms. Paleman go into the details. Just um, on the trail though, from a larger standpoint, you know, this trail was um, put in at the request of city staff uh, to provide more accessibility to the park. Uh, and, you know, our recreation services director uh, feels that with more accessibility and more activity, it really becomes a safer park. Uh, but again, I'll pass um, on to Melissa to answer the question about the, um, the trail itself. 
Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Right, so what you're seeing on one plan is the revision that addresses the parking change that was made as a result of the Planning Commission feedback. Um, they didn't go through and update each and every plan to reflect that change. However, um, Public Works and the Community Development Department have reviewed those plans. There will still be a buffer strip between the parking and the path. Um, and that's primarily because there will be door swing now out into that path, and we want to make Make sure that that doesn't actually take away from the usable space or create a dangerous situation. So that plan will be refined a little bit as we move through the process, but that, that's why you're seeing two different things on the plans. Okay, so there is a strip then, correct, of grass? There will be a strip of landscaping, okay. yes. Great, thank you. And Council Member Supple? I wanted to follow up on that and say that I was very pleased that um, the recommendation from the Planning Commission to make sure that that was going to be an ADA um, accessible ramp for people to get into the park was being followed because I think that was really, really important. So, and I do think it does make the park safer because I've been at that park and just having one entrance isn't probably the best thing. I think it's good to have two, two entrances so it helps the neighborhood. Um, I also had some questions on parking, but I can keep that till the third. Um, item for discussion. So questions? No, no. Oh, Council Member Trotman, do you have one? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, I'll just make what might be a slightly momentarily unpopular comment about parks, that whenever we, we make parks more accessible and we bring new people to the park, it's very normal that there's some pushback from the people who are right next to that park. And there's kind of a sense that that's their park and it's it's unsettling sometimes when there are other people. But I just want to remind folks that this is a great and, and I appreciate staff that they're really opening it up, not only making it more accessible um, from an from a ADA standpoint, but also more accessible in that people from around the community are going to be able to access those place structures in that park and in that something to be commended and it and it shouldn't be a slight to the to the neighbors. Thank you, Council Member Troutman. Other comments or questions from Council? I'll just make an additional comment to say I'm excited for this proposal and project, and I am really excited about the preservation and improvement of the existing affordable housing wherever possible. Um, I think that's an excellent option for a city like Richfield, for Richfield, um, and I am excited about the access to the park and, and am excited to support this. Great, looks like we don't have any other comments on this item. And analyst Martinez Govina, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Council Member Sopo. Council Member Trotman. Council Member Garcia. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The resolution is passed. The next item is, or sorry, the next um, item here for this one is the approval, and I'll make the motion for the approval of the attached resolution granting a conditional use permit and final development plans for a plan unit development at 6345 Lindale Avenue South and 664 Street West. Council Member Whalen, second. Mayor Regan Gonzalez and seconded by Council Member Whalen. Um, Council Member Supple, I know you had a comment. Um, well, first of all, I was really pleased that the Planning Commission recommendation to have the traffic exit out to Lindale Avenue was being incorporated into this um, conditional use permit. So I think that was really good. And we already talked about the park. So thank you for that. Um, I looked over the parking and I know I listened to what the neighbors were saying and I think the parking for this development is fine. And so I'm gonna be supporting this. But my concern is, is when I've driven through the neighborhood a number of times, the street across from this usually is parked up and currently we have no parking on the other side of the street. And there was concern from the neighbors that if you had parking on both sides of the street, it would be troubling for the um, snowplows to get through. So I just want to 
you know, say that I would like it to stay the way it is where one side has no parking and one side has parking because that eliminates that problem. I Because I don't think it's necessarily anything to do with this particular development. I think the parking for this is fine, but that neighborhood in general has a high concentration. And so I think we need to think very carefully before we put parking on both sides of the street. So that was my two cents worth, thank you. Council Member Whalen. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to uh, affirm, I believe I'm remembering this correctly, but it was not in the staff report. This, um, this development does have 20% of the units um, affordable income restricted at 60% AMI, correct? Uh, yes, actually, um, that's what would it would take to meet our inclusionary housing policy. But because it's a, it would be a housing TIF district, it's actually going to be uh, more deeply affordable. It would be 20% at 50% of the AMI. And we specified that at least five of the affordable units must be in the new building. Yes, so thank you. I, I'm planning to support this. I think that piece is really great. I'm really excited about another opportunity to, to renovate a, an existing building without displacing the current residents. Um, I'm excited about uh, the ADA accessible unit. I think um, from talking to people uh, looking for those, I think that will fill up quickly and will demonstrate uh, the need to keep working on building more of those. Um, and I just want to say, I appreciate uh, staff and council and planning commission trying to work to address um, the neighbors concerns. I guess I, I'll go even a, a step further from uh, what Simon was saying that I, I was disappointed to, to hear from some of the neighbors, uh, a real bias against uh, renters or even a fear of renters and a sense that their neighborhood needed protecting from um, from renters moving in. And I, I guess I just want to bring up that I, I continue to be disappointed when I hear that. I think um, neighbors, I would hope neighbors get excited about having more neighbors. Um, and so I, I'm excited about this for a number of reasons. I think it does improve the area um, with the park access with the amenities, with more housing for people um, when there is a, a housing shortage around the region. So um, I, I really appreciate that. Um, and I think, yes, that was everything. Thank you, Council Member Whalen. Additional comments or questions from Council? Council Member uh, Trotman? I just just a brief comment to to say that I'm I'm really I, I think everybody deserves congratulations here um, the staff and the developer who worked hard with our planning commission and appreciate our planning commission and uh, the the thoughtful discussions that they had uh, particularly about the parking but about how this is impacting the community and how we can preserve affordable housing. There's just a lot of things that uh, people don't see that go into a development before um, before before you before it actually takes shape. And so uh, to everybody who's worked hard over over a number of months and years, I just want to say um, congratulations and thank you. And uh, and I look forward to supporting this project. Thank you, Council Member Troutman. I would like to echo that gratitude as well. Um, like I said, I am excited about this project and I think everybody working together on this did help make it a stronger proposal. Um, and then I will kind of echo what Council Member Supple said on the parking. I know that something that we're doing with our developments is, I know this did not trigger a um, traffic study, but as we have been doing with our other developments, I do ask that as this gets built, we do look at that. Um, I know there's a lot of changes going on in the area and we don't exactly know how traffic will play out. And so um, if we can. 
that we go back, do that analysis after it's built and, and seeing how other things come into play in the area and make adjustments um, where possible. I know that that's our practice, but I ask that we do it with this as well. All right, um, any other comments from folks? Nope, all right, if analyst Ms. Gavinia, if you could please take roll call. Hey, Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Councilmember Sapo. Councilmember Troutman. Councilmember Garcia. Councilmember Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The resolution has been approved. The next item is to Councilmember Whalen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This item is, will be a public hearing to and consideration of a resolution approving a final plat of the RF64 edition. Development plans for the RF64 project, previously known as Cedar Point 2, were first approved by the City Council in September 2018 and amended in December 2019. The project is located along the 6300 and 6400 blocks of 16th Avenue South and Richfield Parkway. The project consists of two apartment buildings on Richfield Parkway and 64 townhomes, which is 16 buildings of four units each, along 16th Avenue. The proposed RF64 final plat will subdivide the property into two lots for the apartments, 56 lots for the individual townhomes, and various outlots for parking, driveways, and other common areas. The first two townhome buildings, eight units, are nearing completion in the southwest corner of the project site at 16th Avenue and 65th Street. And a separate plat for that specific area was approved by the council on April 28, 2020 to facilitate the sale of those units. The proposed plat has been reviewed by the city attorney's office and Richfield Public Works. All comments have been addressed or included as stipulations in the resolution. While a public hearing is required by state statute, the plat is a technical document dealing with a combination or division of land and is not a reconsideration of land use approvals for the development. The proposed plat meets requirements and therefore staff recommends approval of the attached resolution. Um, and does staff have anything to add or should we move to the public hearing? I, I don't have anything to add. Okay, well, then I will, uh, we will open up the public hearing and uh, assistant Win, do we have anyone here for the public hearing. We currently do not have any callers for the public hearing. I will just reiterate uh, for the residents that are watching, you can call in to participate live during the meeting for a public hearing. You can call the phone number 612 861 0651 and you'll be connected um, but as of right now we currently do not have anything okay thank you um i imagine we'll wait a minute or two to see if anyone calls in waiting. Ms. Mailman, I wanted to just say I, I really appreciate your, your visitor that comes to visit. She's very cute. Thank you. She's going to slither upstairs now. <laughs> Well, it appears um, that we do not have anyone for the public hearing. Would someone like to move to close the public, or I will move to close the public hearing? Council Member Sopel, second. Motion to close the public hearing has been made by Council Member Whalen and seconded by Council Member Sopel. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote to close the public hearing? Are you Reagan Gonzalez? Aye. Councilmember Supple? Aye. 
Council Member Troutman? Aye. Council Member Garcia? Council Member Wayland? Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The public hearing has been closed. All right, then I will move to um, adopt a resolution approving a final plat of the RF 64 edition. Second, Councilmember Troutman. Thank you. The motion has been made by Councilmember Whalen and seconded by Councilmember Troutman. Are there any um, council comments or discussion items on this one? Councilmember Seppel. I just think it's really great that this is moving forward because I know this started over a decade ago. So it's really cool to see it finally. Thank you. Council member Whalen. Um, I also am excited and wanted to thank the, the staff who opened up. Um, we got a chance to see some of the units that are completed for the townhomes. Um, and I'm really excited for those that um, townhomes are we don't have many in Richfield, and I know that people are are looking for them. Um, so they look great, and uh, encourage people to check them out if you're looking. I would like to just echo what my colleagues have said in terms of being excited for this to actually happen. Um, and then the tour was excellent. I This might sound silly, but I think my favorite room was the garage. The garage is like the fanciest, it's very fancy, the fanciest garage I've ever seen that you can just almost use for a studio or, or something else. But it was a really great opportunity to take a tour and I'm excited for the rest of the project to move forward. And it will be a huge asset into uh, for the future of Richfield. Great. Um, Council Member Chapman, did you have a comment? Oh, uh, no comment. Just um, just uh, echoing that it was uh, it was great to to visit the development. It looks great, and uh, it's a great addition to Richfield. Thank you, Mart um, Analyst Martinez Gavinia. Could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Council Member Chapman. Aye. Council Member Garcia. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Okay, the resolution has been approved. The next item is for Council Member Supple. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we're going to conduct a public hearing and consider approval of resolutions vacating utility easements and approving the preliminary and final plats of the Henley II edition. So the developer has purchased three of the five properties and has the remaining two under contract. The proposed plat would combine the five properties into a single lot. Existing utility easements that align with the current lot lines and services will be vacated or removed. And, a new, and new easements aligning with the new services have been dedicated in the plat. The proposed plat has been reviewed by the city attorney's office, utility providers, and the public sports department. All comments have been addressed or included as stipulations in the resolution. While a public hearing is required by state statute, the plat is a technical document dealing with the combination or division of land and is not a reconsideration of land use approvals for the development. The proposed plat and vacation requests meet requirements and therefore staff recommends approval of the attached resolutions. So did the staff have anything else they wanted to add? Uh, no, council member Seppel. I guess the only thing I would add is that on this on this project and, and on all of our projects, but this one in particular, the uh, the engineering and architecture folks we worked at with at the developers uh, were uh, did very good work uh, and have been uh, a pleasure to work with. And the you know the resulting plat, um, you know. It, this looks like a pretty boring thing, but uh, any of these, it's it's uh, just good to have a, a working relationship with the development team that allows us to achieve this. Thank you. Um, so then we're going to open up the public hearing. Um, the phone number for calling in for the public hearing is 612-861-0651.
Assistant Wynn, is there anyone wishing to comment? Uh, thank you. We currently do not have anybody that has called in. Um, we'd just like to remind residents, obviously you can call the phone number that Council Member Supple provided. You can also participate in public hearings and open forums by sending an email to myself at kwynn at richfieldmn.gov. And those comments can be read by the council at the meetings. Um, again, that is for either open forum or for public hearings as well. So you said there's about a 30 second delay. So we can pause a little more and see if anyone wants to call in. Again, it's 612-861-0651. I, I do have a caller coming through, so give me just a moment here. All right, thank you. While we're waiting, I just wanted to thank the staff for all the work they've been doing on all of this. My name is Ruane on Essie Roson, 2421 West. Are you getting it? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. My name is Ruane on Essie Roson, 2421 West 65th Street. I want to thank the uh, council for putting itself on channel 16 again. Uh, I don't have access to computers, so I, I'm glad to be able to get in touch with you this way. I just want to let you know that I was hoping to get in on the open forum, but it was not broadcast over the television. I have no comment on this item, but I would like uh, to make in future uh, when you have an open forum, it gets broadcast so that we can comment. Thank you very much. Bye. This is Mayor Regan Gonzalez. I just have a question on that comment. Um, I just want to double check that I must, I'm guessing that our open forum was broadcasted um, tonight, correct? Yep, you're correct. Our, our meetings are being broadcast from beginning to end. The open forum is right at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and and we, we did state that, but um, like we said before, if it, you are unable to participate, in the live meeting, you can call my um, my office phone at 612-861-9711 and leave your comment there prior to the meeting as well. Um, I know some people don't necessarily have email. You can also mail your items to City Hall at 6700 Portland Avenue here in Richfield, and we can get those um, read at the council meetings as well. And with that, I, I do not have any other callers. All right, then I would move to close the public hearing. Council Member Whalen, second. Motion has been made by Council Member Supple and seconded by Council Member Whalen. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take a roll call vote? Mayor Ryan Gonzalez? Aye. Supple? Aye. Council Member Trotman? Aye. Council Member Garcia? Council Member Whalen? Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The public hearing has been closed. Madam Mayor, do you want me to do each of these separately? 
for two um, items. I just want to confirm with our city attorney, Tijan, is that correct that we do these items separately? Uh, Mayor and Council, I think in this case, you can do the motions together. You can just do one motion. The previous one had a different, with the comp plan amendment, it was slightly different. Okay, then this is Council Member Supple. I would move we adopt a resolution vacating storm sewer and utility easements within the Henley II development site at 64th Street West and Lindale Avenue South and adopt a resolution approving the final plat of the Henley II addition. Council Member Wayne, second. second. Thank you. The motion has been made by Council Member Supple and seconded by Council Member Whalen. Are there any comments from Council on this item? Great. Um, Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Ryan Gonzalez? Aye. Council Member Supple? Council Member Trotman? Aye. Council Member Garcia? Council Member Whalen? Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The resolution has been approved. The next item goes to Council Member Troutman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this item is to consider the approval of the first reading of an ordinance amending subsection 210.01 of the City Code related to City Council salaries. Uh, so chapter two, section 210 of the city code establishes the salaries of the city council and subsection 210.01 subdivision five provides that salaries of the council members shall be reviewed by the city council by May in each year in which an election is held pursuant to section 200 of the code. An ordinance amending the salaries established by this section must not take effect until after the next scheduled municipal election. In 2018, uh, the 2018 ordinance change was consistent with past practice. The city council salary increase was based on the increase granted to employees in the management and general services pay plan in the previous year. In 2018, the city council approved an ordinance for a salary adjustment or salary adjustments that were the lesser of 3.5% or the percentage increase in the annual pay structure granted on January 1, 2018 and January 1, 2019 to the management and general services pay plans. Actual annual salary increases for the Marion City Council were 3% each year based on the management and general services pay plans effective January 1, 2019 and January 1, 2020, respectively. The city has a 30-year history of providing the same cost of living increase to all of its employee groups with four of the five union contracts having settled for 2021 at a 3% increase. Staff anticipate a 3% adjustment to be recommended for non-represented employees for 2021. In the past, city council has also reviewed their salaries compared to other metropolitan cities. We've attached the information um, on other metro, metropolitan city salaries. Uh, we, and, we end in the lower quartile of those cities. Uh, but on June 23rd, 2020, the City Council reviewed the comparable City Council salaries and the past practices in setting future salaries during a work session. The majority of the Council expressed their desire to maintain the City Council salaries at the same rate, a 0% increase. In 2021, due to the financial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, they also directed staff to provide an economic trigger in the ordinance for 2022 that would set the increase to zero if the economy is not improved or set the salary increase based on what is granted to employees in the management and general services plan pay plan in previous in the previous year of 2021. Uh, so the, uh, the attached ordinance provides for a 0% increase in 2021 and a 0% increase in 2022 if the National Bureau of Economic Research finds the economy is in recession. It also includes that if NBER finds that the economy is, is not recession, then the salary increase would match the increase granted to the management and general services pay plans for the previous year, 2021. Uh, so the, um, the recommended uh, motion and the motion that I'd make is that we would approve the first reading of the ordinance 
amending subsection 210.01 of the city code related to city council salaries and schedule the second reading for July 28, 2020. Supple second. Thank you. The motion has been made by Council Member Troutman and seconded by Council Member Supple. Are there any um, council discussion points on this or questions? No. Nope. Oh, Council Member Troutman. I, was, I wasn't able to uh, to attend the work session, but um, share share my colleagues' desire not to increase our salaries at this time. Um, this is a very unsettling time, and it's a small amount of money. And I don't think any of us do do this for the do this for the the, the pay that we receive. But um, really glad to support and bring this uh, this motion. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Great. Um, Analyst Martinez Gavinia, if you could please take roll call vote. Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Trotman. Aye. Council Member Garcia. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The approval of the first reading um, has been made. Thank you. The next item, I believe, is claims in payroll. Council Member Whalen, I don't know if you've done claims in payroll yet, but I'll pass it on to you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I will move claims and payroll. Council Member Troutman, I second. Claims and payroll has been moved by Council Member Whalen and seconded by Council Member Troutman. Just want to send a little note to Council Member Garcia, wishing you and your family and their health well, um, and we hope to see you soon. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Troutman. Aye. Council Member Garcia. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. Claims and payroll has been approved. Hats off. Um, I will start with Council Member Supple. Thank you, Madam Mayor. First of all, I wanted to just say that the uh, Richfield Historical Society had their grand reopening last Saturday, and it was really awesome. They had um, people there that were talking about woodworking and clothing, and it was set so it was socially distanced outside for those demonstrations, and they had tours of the Bartholomew House, and then there also were some inside activities. So they're going to have the second half of their grand reopening this coming Saturday. So if you weren't able to attend, um, you can go to that as well. Um, secondly, I was able to um, go to the Transportation Commission meeting last week, and they had um, a guest speaker that came in and talked about equity in decision making and getting input from people and, and what you should do as best practices and that was really well done and so I just wanted to say thank you to the Transportation Commission and to everybody that was responsible for that because the speaker was really great. Um, and then we got our water quality report and so kudos again to Public Works. Richfield has some of the best water around. I know when we used to um, go on field trips and stuff the kids would cheer when they get back to Richfield because they have good water and I know that People probably don't believe that, but it was very true. They would cheer on the buses because they could come back and have Richfield water. So thank you all for that. Thank you, Council Member Supple. And I am so sorry. I completely skipped over the city manager's report. So I'm going to go back to that and then we'll finish off hats off. Um, so city manager Rodriguez, I'm so sorry about that. Thank you, Mayor. No worries. Um, I have a really short report, actually. Um, since Adina um, implemented their local mask policy, I have been getting um, both pro and uh, and against uh, local mask policy, and I know you all have as well. We are doing our research, um, and we will be bringing you a proposed local mask um, policy uh, for the July 28th work session. However, we are hearing, we continue to hear that the governor is considering imposing a mass policy statewide. So 
we um, obviously won't bring it to you if the governor does it first. Um, we changed, um, we are changing liquor stores. We're extending them for two more hours, which I know will make a lot of folks happy. Um, we've got more people going to work now and um, trying to get back uh, by six can be tough for folks. So um, hopefully that will accommodate people's schedules better. Um, also our, our jet reg operations, the motor vehicle services, we have moved more people inside. Um, our, our buildings folks did a great job so that they're lined up around the waiting area there so they can so still socially distance, but they don't have to wait outside in the heat. Um, and we needed to solve it as well because we've got colder weather at some point here. Um, so we continue to try and change our mitigations um, so that we can deliver services um, and we will continue to do so. Um, and I don't have anything else. Thank you, City Manager Rodriguez. Any questions or comments from Council? Thank you. Council Member Trotman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a quick hats off to our Parks and Rec Department. We, the, you know, like, like lots of folks, our families have been lots of, uh, lots of, uh, difficult conversations for the kids telling them what we're not going to do. You know, this thing was canceled or that thing was canceled, but we're really grateful for what the Parks and Rec is doing. Um, they both did um, tennis lessons for just an incredibly reasonable price. It just, it was, it was, it was almost, I want to say it was almost nothing. Um, and um, I, I want to say less than $10. And um, they were able to do tennis camp all week they were able to learn um it was a new game for them but it was a game they could do uh, in a socially distant way and uh, so they learned that and there are more uh, tennis lessons for kids still available the rest of the summer so there's an opportunity to sign up for that and um and my oldest son doesn't know this yet but there's a survival camp or a survival program um, at woodlake nature center that he signed up for for his birthday and so there are fun things like that that our parks doing and they're um, so hats off to all our parks and rec staff and director amy markle for uh for giving our kids uh, a great summer thank you council member whalen and thank you city manager rodriguez for your report um council member Troutman. i think i might have just said council member whalen and council member Troutman, do you have anything else for your hats off or was that your hats off that that was it. Um, and Council Member Whalen, would you like to do hats off? Um, I I just think it's funny. I Simon that you would say that. I'm I'm sure your son is at home watching this right now, and you just gave away the surprise. Uh oh, yeah, nobody nobody <laughs> tell nobody tell justice. <laughs> um, so my hats off. I wanted to give a shout out. We we had a um an opening on the planning commission and just got to interview uh several candidates for that um all of whom were were wonderful it's always exciting to meet and hear from the the leaders in our community so thank you to everyone who applied um unfortunately there's only one spot uh and so for them anyone who didn't get it um and for anyone who's thinking about city leadership um, please reach out to us. There's lots of informal ways that you can be a leader in Richfield, um, but also just want to put on people's radar now to start thinking about um, our usual commission applications are in December. So if you're uh, looking to get involved and wanting to have a voice in um, city decisions, something to think about. Um, the next thing, uh, we're less than a month away from the uh, primary this year. Um, that's on August 11th um, and wanted to encourage people to sign up to vote by mail. Um, we, we approved our election judges. There will be in-person voting, um, but it keeps them and you safest um, to, to vote by mail. And that uh, there's a couple different ways to sign up for that, but the Secretary of State, our city clerk, the county, um, voter offices are, are all recommending that um, if you're open to it. So you can register for that at mnvotes.org um, or you can call uh, Beth, our city clerk at 612-861-0580. Um, there's also much more voting information on our city website. Um, 
And then lastly, just want to say thank you again. We continue. Um, City Manager Rodriguez mentioned the number of people speaking up on masks. We continue to have people speaking up, pushing for um, equity and questions and ideas around policing that I by far easily have in the last two months um, far more resident input than I got in the year and a half I've been on council before that. And so thank you to everyone who's speaking up, wanting to get involved and, and have your voice heard and please continue to do so. Thank you, Council Member Whalen. Um, and I did check in with our um, city clerk, Beth, and I just asked her um, if she had any updates I could share around elections. And she said that we continue to look for election judges. Um, so if you're interested, please do consider this year, um, especially those who identify as Republicans. So we do need to have party balance at our, at our polling locations, and it can be difficult to strike that balance um, because we have been under with folks who um, identify as Republican. And we are doing our election judge trainings online this year. So hopefully um, that might entice somebody or um, feel a little more accessible or safe for folks this year to become an election judge if taking the training online helps. Um, and then again, remember, as Council Member Whalen said, there's absentee voting and the city is here to help in any way that we can. We know that um, we've been receiving as residents so much mail about voting by mail and that can be confusing. So we're here to help and answer any questions that you have. So you can call us at 612-861-0580 or you can call Beth, our city clerk directly at 612-861-9738 with any questions you may have about voting. Um, and then we will be doing absentee direct balloting starting August 4th through August 10th. And basically what that means, direct ballot, balloting means that the voter still fills out the absentee ballot application, but they will feed their ballot into the ballot counter just like they do on election day. Um, so just a couple of reminders. And again, we're here to help and answer any questions you have and making sure that voting is easy for all of our residents. So that's all I have. Thank you, everybody. Um, seeing that we have no other items, I will adjourn our meeting and see you in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank you.